And I think we're going again. What's that? No. I'm just gonna go ahead and... There we go. Yeah. Now. And, you know, Jake is talking about, you know, the, why he wishes Judith and Kenny were gay. Be a lot easier to explain. You're not fooling anybody, Judith. And Candy's dead with Judith. I watch one donkey sex show and you make me pay for it the rest of my life. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was interrupting you. Candy, Mandy, Andy. Dandy. Subtitles in my language always had that handy. I don't think there's... I'm not sure we have a good word for dandy that... Yeah, if they just wrote dandy, then a lot of people wouldn't understand that. There we go. If I maybe just... Did you get all that, Berta? Sweet whistling Geronimo, you people are like a box of hamsters just crawling all over each other. Hi, Alan, how are you? About two heartbeats from a brain aneurysm. To be honest, Candy's mom and I are worried about your intentions. You should be. Because I intend to kill you. And then Charlie's like, that attitude is not gonna... You're not going to make any friends with that attitude around here, mister. Hey there, young man. Don't be a selfish lover. Consider her needs. This isn't over. <laughs> I love how Andy keeps suggesting date ideas every time he takes a break and kissing Judith. And then, you know, after leaving the house with Judith, he's not even that, like, unhappy or anything. He's just like, maybe we would go to the swap meet or something like that. And then he's... Yeah, and then, like, with, with, you know, he, yeah, let's see, Andy and Alan leave at the same time, and then, you know, Alan's like, I like your daughter, I like your ex-wife, want to go to a swap meet? <laughs> yeah, when, when Kevin Sorbo tries intentionally to be funny, he is very, very funny, and when he plays an evil atheist in you know, Christian propaganda, as, yeah, some people find that very funny as well. Hopefully it's not converting many people. Let's see. Dumb as wood. Oh my god! But it's good wood. <laughs> I love Charlie dodging Andy and Judith and several times having doors opened in his face. Alan and Candy were doing each other in the jacuzzi. <laughs> and then, you know, both hid when, like, Judith... Yeah. I've turned down the brightness on the screen, and I think it just, it makes it harder to make sure if it's still recording, but yeah. Broadcasting. Yeah, and, and you know, Judith and Andy get in the tub, and then finally, Alan and Candy can't breathe anymore. They, you know, hi, Judith. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> I thought we were friends. Friends don't have sex with the first friend's ex in their hot tub. Yeah, ha. Huh? And now Mandy and Charlie are having sex in the jacuzzi. I'm really glad that Alan did get Judith a jacuzzi, or you know, she got one with alimony money. Because they sure did get a lot of mileage out of it this season. Let's see. That brings us to... And the plot moistens. Let's see. 
Can't argue with that. Forget it, Alan. I only do the after sex chat with people I've just had sex with. This game stinks. No, you stink at it. Pretty sure that's what he just said. I love Alan performing for Jake. Jake is terrible at singing. He really does not want that audition to go well, does he? And Jake thinks Charlie is the one who makes Queen sound bad. Alan is so bad at lying. I was with another woman. Okay, see, okay, okay, see, that's a good lie. I am so proud of you. Were they howling the entire ad break? I love Charlie's, you know, as Alan is explaining that it's the teacher, Charlie's, you know, howls, you know, first it's your, and then I'm not having sex with her. Aru? It's Jake's teacher. Aru? <laughs> There's, there's more in there, but I didn't voice type it down. I really, really love the, the actress who plays the teacher here and in other stuff. I was surprised by all the stuff. She plays a very different character here than she does in other stuff I've seen her in, but she's great in everything I've seen her in. And Charlie keeps trying to talk Alan into having sex with the teacher. <clears throat> Finally, Alan has someone to enjoy Scrabble with. I'll tell you, you went to Stables, ta Stables to see Roger. Who? Wow. He already forgot his terrible lie. Let me give you a hint. It's something that's a girl's best friend and looks great wrapped around her neck. I'm getting a monkey? <laughs> I'm sorry, I love her voice. I love the way she says, I, I can't quite imitate. Monkey? Does she has like, does she have like a dialect? Maybe is it where the actress is from, or where, or is she putting on a dialect for the? I don't know. Jake is still terrible at singing. That's terrific. Do you want to hear it again? No. <laughs> we can hope stinks suddenly becomes popular, but I wouldn't count on it. Charlie, I am begging you, no more jewelry. Don't worry, it's not funny twice. Just once with Aunt Sophie. I guess this is it for this particular. Eh, a little bit of life left to it. I refuse to throw it out yet. I do have a new one, a new, an entire new set. I don't want to have to throw these out before I absolutely have to. Now. It's not a lifetime yet. You see, you see, that um is the battle cry for the chronic masturbator. And you know, Charlie's holding up one of his own shirts for, for Jake. He says, I've got a lot of money, but I'm not a corporate drone. A drone, no, it says I'm pushing 40 and I can't deal with it. Jake does look good and dance well. And you know, they, they drive to uh, around the house of, of Wendy Cho and Charlie's like, Alan, you take one step out of this car and I'll beat your brains in with a tire iron. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Charlie. No, Charlie, it's put that cookie down. The waitress is so not into Alan, but she is into Charlie. Technically, it's my apple and my eye. Yeah. Evelyn taught Alan about sex and put him off fruit. Charlie, please don't take this the wrong way, but I don't want Jake to grow up to be you. How could I, Alan, how could I possibly take that the wrong way? One kiss and he's ready to marry the girl. So, then I don't have to worry. He's definitely your son. 
And let's see. Crap, I guess I do have to retire that. No, wait. It's not dead yet. Just mostly. Arguments for the quickie. Jake, you are way too white for that. Jake is so bad at forwarding the phone messages. Yes, maybe afterwards you can take me to an anthill and smear honey on my genitals. How am I naive? Oh, oh, I know this one. And, you know, Berta describes something, you know, yeah, one of her white trash experiences, a reason the next might call you. It happens. You want the truth? No, probably not. Good call. And Berta has it all in small change. Which, if I recall, is because of the white trash story. You're not a gangster either. You're a dorky white kid with a Cub Scout, Cub Scout bandana on his head. I take your hand, lead you up to my bedroom, where I slowly undress you and lie you down, crisp, cool sheets, and make wild, passionate love to you. So we're both totally spent. Okay. In the morning, I bring you a cup of coffee and your car keys. Wow. Wait, my car keys? I promise to call you, but I never will. And when you call me, you'll find that the phone number I gave belongs to a dry cleaner in Koreatown. What? And when all's said and done, you know what we'll have? Nothing. Not even a good memory. So what do you say we both abandon this ridiculous charade? Okay. Jesus, I was just trying to get laid. I guess he started giving his giving a f fake number to, to girls so that they won't, you know. Oh wait, no, that was that was him calling another girl in that episode where Rose had the TrialHarperSocks.com website. Uh, no, no, never mind. Both Jake and Candy fell asleep during the dance. Great, good, no, no, great. Charlie so doesn't care about the other dancer. I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember. <laughs> I love Charlie overthinking how he's going to receive her when Mia's on her way. Did Jake like it? He was absolutely knocked out. This is a hard thing to ask. You need some money. What? No. So you want to get back together? So what? You want to get back together again? Oh God, no. He blows out the candle. He's like, I'm not wasting a romantic candle on this. Charlie, I think you're a terrific guy. You're smart, you're handsome, you're talented. All good arguments for the quickie. Will you let me finish? Didn't I always? I understand. You do? No, I'm just trying to be supportive. Charlie, I came here because, well, I want your sperm. All right, where do you want it? And Charlie wakes Alan up. Mia wants sperm. Well, don't look at me. Charlie, drinking, gambling, and casual sex is not a lifestyle. Tell you what, when he turns 12, I'll track him down, bring him to live with you, and we'll see if you get your phone messages. Hey, when the boys reach escape velocity, they're on their own. It's out of my hands, so to speak. I'll be back in two shakes. Three if it's cold. I love all the innuendo about Charlie's sperm in this episode. And Charlie's been in there forever. And Alan doesn't know which door he went in. Things didn't go down as planned. Or up. And one of the and Charlie mentions the porn Ask Master Seven, the final chapter. Ask Master Seven is not the final chapter. They left a lot of loose ends. Who said anything about having sex? I'm asking you to marry me. It's a decent joke, but it clearly didn't get a laugh from the audience since it was a twist. Or is this one of those where they put the intended response on the 
I mean, yeah, perfectly fine joke. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to abandon this particular. Yep, it is dead as a doornail. Pistol packing intersects. Yet again, I am not using the original word. And this is yet another great finale, season finale. Guess what I'm gonna do with Mia? Guess what I'm already doing with Candy? That's not fair, Alan. You have to give him a hint. He doesn't need a hint. Then how's he supposed to guess it? And then Charlie leaves. Oh well, look, a place to hang my washcloth. Me and I are going the distance. Fifteen, maybe twenty years. Charlie, that's not the distance. The distance is, you know, the rest of your life. If I'm still married after twenty years, kill me. <laughs> and Jake, once again, does not care. And, you know, Rose is like... You know, out there and, and Joyce like, did you tell her? Would you? I'll make you my best man. You mean I'm not? You're on the short list, but this could send shit. I, I really love how it just, just like that, it goes from, you know, when, when the, when, when he asks, did you tell Rose? You know, clearly it's like, you didn't tell her, did you? Because she she's here because she's furious that I'm going to be with Mia. And then immediately goes from that to, well, would you be the one to tell her? Because I don't want to be the one. Just, yeah. And Rose, you know, Charlie tells her. <laughs> I really love the whole... Is this good news? Because I could really use some good news. Well, you know, I I think it's good news. Do you remember Mia? Ah, oh, yeah. Ugh. She tried to change. I, I would never do that. Well, you know, Mia and I are getting married and, and just, <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the couple of reactions. Um, I didn't voice type all of them, but, you know. Afraid? There's nothing to be afraid of, Charlie. You're my friend. And then she smiles the way Wednesday Adams smiles in Adams Family Values, and it is terrifying. She must have practiced that. She 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 must have, you know, stood in front of the mirror and and yeah. I I don't think I could um, do it just justice. What's a happier occasion than a wedding? Well, my mother's funeral springs to mind. There'll be dancing, music. My mom will be in a box. And Alan tries to take over the planning of the wedding. That's, yeah, I'm just briefly going to just, that, that really is funny. You know, Charlie's like, I don't know, I, I don't really like the, you know, the little action figures. Well, they're traditional, isn't it? You know, we, we don't even need to have cake. We could have pie. A wedding pie? Well, more than one. So everybody gets some crust. And, you know, Alan walks in and Mia knows that she's going to get, you know, Alan's going to support her on this. Alan, what do you think of wedding pie? Where would you put the little bride and groom? And then, you know, the whole... Yeah, he goes into and like, what, what kind of flowers were you thinking of? Well, I like, you know, Lilies are great. Yeah, they're great. If the bride and groom are recently deceased, and then he looks at Charlie like, "Can you believe her? This is ridiculous." And just the, it's, I like lilies. Mia, we're never gonna get through this unless you focus. And then he's like, and and uh, yeah, then there's the. I know it's not it's it's not politically correct to throw rice anymore, but if you throw bird seed, you end up. 
you end up you, with your wedding looking like a Hitchcock movie. And you know, after all that, Mia turns to John and is like, okay, wedding pie, you got it, or something like that. You know, as long as Alan isn't in charge anymore. You know what we call these rings like that in my neighborhood? Stumpy. Hey, don't look at me, just don't go to our neighborhood. Your family hates me, don't they? Not just you. <laughs> oh, I left my doggy bag. Can we go back? We can never go back, Jake. <laughs> You're not marrying into the Adams family. And Evelyn is like, you know, if you don't get, like, you know, you're going to end up with this, this, and this, and then, um, mom, every one of my surgeries was necessary. <laughs> you know, she, she's basically describing how she behaved after divorce. And, you know, it's, Candy says something about how, you know, she, she liked it or something. Of course, you liked it. You got to inform my bride-to-be and, and her entire family that you had sex with me before you had sex with him. I was just telling Mia that I know how lucky she is. And nevertheless, honey, it was not an appropriate toast. <laughs> I'm sorry, just the image, you know, candy, like, ding, 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 and stands up in front of everyone and just, you know, <laughs> Rose showed up at my place wearing a full wedding dress. You know, Rose, sorry. Rose shows up at me she's wearing a full wedding dress. She's got the bouquet and everything. Just Sorry, the, the stuff Mia says about it comes a little late. Don't set the bar too high for the wedding night. It's a long, stressful day. You'll be exhausted, full of banquet food and cheap champagne. Take my advice. Tell your lover, give her a big kiss, and try to fall asleep with your ass pointed toward an open window. You, sir, have the heart of a poet. I am merely the voice of smelly experience. Marriage is a great ride, until you puke. She was wearing a wedding gown. She's going to wear it to our wedding and wanted to make sure we didn't clash. Well, that's considerate. She, then she wanted to give me a shower, a wedding shower, an actual soap and water shower. And, you know, Jerry's talking about me as well. Give you away that cheapskate? I'll probably have to trade a pony and a couple of blankets for you. And Kenny's like, here comes the ride, here comes the ride. Dude, that's all I got. I was afraid you were going to bail. That's funny, she said the same thing about you. Thank you, Candy. <laughs> Charlie actually did not think that Alan would move out when Mia moved in. Who knew your idea of marriage was you and me alone in a house? Well, yeah, well, it's a package deal. My sperm and my brother go hand in hand. Now let's head to a strip joint, get drunk, and let the healing begin. Well, before that, can I ask you a favor? Can I borrow your wedding ring? Are you insane? Come on, you're not using it. That really, that's a, that's a very Charlie moment for Alan there. That's really not something, uh, yeah, but, you know, he, he's really into candy, and, yeah, they were just talking about, I thought as long as we're in Vegas, I'd marry candy. And, yeah. That's, I don't freaking believe it. Cheer up, Charlie. You're finally getting what you always wanted. I'm moving out of your house. I don't freaking believe it. <laughs> oh, and that is the entire season. So, yeah, this is almost only half as long as the other videos. I don't quite know why. Tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow, depending on when the video goes up, should be peppermint and then i think it will be quite a while before there is another you know two two videos in another weekend unless i record like a really really short one or something anyway the yeah just briefly all right Blake. 
just briefly, I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed recording, and I will catch you next time. Stop bringing the recording.